This is a lithium iron phosphate 12 volt battery system that I made from the high voltage cells. I'm going to go over the construction, some of the design elements of it, um, and then I'm going to put it in the bike. So yeah, enjoy the video. So I'm going to go over a little bit of how I designed this battery. I'm doing a lot of talking about S and P count, which is series and parallel. And for this battery, we're going to go ahead and use a 4S, 4P. Um, in order to get cells in series, um, you're going to put them negative to positive. Okay, and each cell has a nominal voltage of 3.2 volts. Well, when you put them together, they add up, so that's 6.4 volts for these two. In order to get a 12 volt system, we're gonna put two more cells, so a total of four in series, and that's negative to positive for each of those, and that gives us a total nominal voltage of 12.8. Now, there's actually a voltage range for these, and to calculate that, you basically figure out the range, which is 2.8 to 3.6 for lithium iron phosphate. And that ends up being times four, I think 11.2 to 14.4 volts. That's gonna be the maximum voltage, this is gonna be the minimum voltage. Now, in order to put them in parallel, you actually put the cells together, negative to negative. And we're gonna do four of those. And since these are four amp hour cells, we're gonna multiply that by four for parallel, and that's gonna give us 16 amp hours per piece. So to get the total energy of the system, we're gonna multiply the, the nominal voltage times the amp hours, and that gives us the energy, and that's gonna give us 12.8 times 16 amp hours, and that's approximately 200 watt hours. Now, my system, after I checked it, actually used 100, watt hour, or 100 watts approximately. So in order to calculate the amount of time that, we need, that we're gonna get out of this battery in total, we're gonna take the amount of energy of the system, so 200 watt hours, and we're gonna divide that by the amount of watts that the system uses. And that's gonna give us approximately two hours of runtime. In order to find this, I hooked each component up on the 12 volt system and calculated the amount of amps it used times the amount of uh, volts that I had going in and that gave me the watts per piece and then I calculated all those together to find it. So having a 200 watt hour system uh, and a 100 watt usage, that'll be two hours and since each run only takes five minutes tops, I'll never really have a problem of ever running out of energy in 12 volt system. So as you can see, I laid out all the cells that I need and the current collectors I made and I have four bypass balancers here. So while I'm building the battery, I'm making sure to uh, tighten these down not too tight to break them off and I'm building the voltage from the lowest to the highest. And while I do this, I'm making sure that I, um, I install little plastic covers. You can see me install it there. Um, just to make sure that I don't drop any tools or arc anything, because that could be the most dangerous part of this process. Okay, so here is the unisolated version. You can see, if you look close, you can never touch these, but I do have the plastic liners in between just in case anything crazy happens. So I've hooked up these uh, bypass balancers, so that's what I call them, I don't know what they're actually called, but they're basically a 1S balancer. Once this cell reaches 3.6 volts, 
it opens up a circuit and runs the excess um, energy over these resistors, creating heat, and there's a little red LED that kicks on. Each of these has their own, so when you're charging at 14.4 volts, um, at the end of the charge you'll have a very low amperage, which is typically about half amp to three quarters of an amp. And uh, if any of these are a little bit over voltage, they'll open up and allow the under voltage ones to all come up to 3.6. Um, a little bit of a dumb way of doing it, um, but it's inexpensive and it's what I have. These are available, I think, at battery space, not these exact ones, but some very similar pieces. I've also included a, a M6 press in nut on the terminal. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a space down there, so I gotta make sure that these don't get smooshed by those or I don't put a bolt so long that it runs down to the cell. So, definitely not pokey yokey, but uh, I don't think anyone else can be touching it or messing with it, so hopefully it should be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stick the isolation back on this, wrap it up in some cloth tape, and then, uh, yeah, I think we'll see the final product and I'll install it in the bike. We've done a lot of battery stuff. I'm gonna get back on the chassis pretty soon. I'm waiting to hear back from the race coordinators and safety guys to make sure that my seat is okay. I'll probably do a little video about that uh, as far as correspondence and how I went about talking to them and um, how I went through the process of making sure that I could qualify to run this bike. So yeah, we're gonna put the 12 volt system back in. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit more reliable. I'll get more cycle life and deeper depth of discharge. Um, so yeah, hopefully you liked the video. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and have a good one.